Hi everybody and uh, welcome to today's uh, tutorial. So um, if you're new and this is the first one, uh, my name is Emma Morrissey and I do uh, lots of different um, art uh, demos. So today what I wanted to do was talk to you a little bit about watercolour and what's known as a restricted palette. So a restricted palette is where you um, will use a very limited uh, number of colours in your painting, sometimes only one, which is what um, I'm going to show you today. So I just wanted to talk you through the uh, materials. So uh, a paintbrush, so this is a uh, round head one, and this is uh, a size uh, 12, but it doesn't matter too much uh, what size uh, you use, I would recommend a, a round head one like this. I've also got some watercolour uh, paper here, uh, but mixed media paper will uh, work uh, just as good. Um, basically this um, is designed specifically to take a certain number of layers of paint and layers of water. And if you've got um, some watercolour, now you can get all sorts of different uh, sets of watercolour. So you can get watercolour um, tubes. You can also get what's known as a pan set, which is this one here. So of course this is well loved and well used as you can see, but these are known as pans. And they do last a very uh, long time. You'll get a palette on the other side and it often comes with a small uh, brush uh, like this, which you can use. So again, you can see this is a very, very small brush. So uh, really good for uh, detailing work. A top tip for you is uh, once you uh, start to uh, use up uh, the different colours, what you can do is instead of buying the individual pans, which you can do, but they, they, they can be a little bit um, costly. So instead of buying the individual uh, pans to replace them, what you can do is if you've got um, some watercolour tubes of paint, you can just squirt a little bit in there, let it set, and then it's basically the same thing. Okay, so I've chosen uh, this sort of sepia uh, image um, which I've got from Pixabay. I'll make sure you have the link to this so that you can paint along with me and as you can see it's all one tone so what we're going to do is I'm going to guide you through just using um, yellow ochre which is this colour here. Okay so I'm going to take this uh, out of here. Um, if you want to do a basic sketch you can but because it's sort of uh, more or less a uh, sort of circular curve um, image what I'm going to do is just uh, sort of go straight into it got a little bit of water and uh, one of the things I always uh, recommend uh, let me just zoom this out a little bit um, I always recommend when doing uh, anything like this is uh, you want to spend equal amounts of time looking at the reference and then looking back at your painting so you'll be darting your gaze backwards and forwards backwards and forwards constantly this helps you to get um, perspective so what I'm going to do is just dip the paintbrush into my water. I'm going to go into some yellow ochre. I'm just going to sort of load this into the tip of my brush. And I'm going to start at the handle and I'm just darting my gaze backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, just to get a basic shape. And then because I've got still quite a bit of water, what I'm going to do uh, is just use the water just to guide the shape. Add a bit more water and what this does is by using uh, the water in this way you're basically creating a fade and this is a uh, wonderful way of uh, just doing some basic uh, sort of paint work. So you just get basic shape in there like that. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to start working on uh, the background a little bit. So again, when we have a look at these different tones, we can see that uh, some of the tones are a little bit darker in certain places. So that's where you have more paint on your brush than water. So you're using water to uh, basically get a paler tone of the colour. So you're diluting it and using it to just uh, create the various different tones that uh, you need to create a little bit of depth to your painting. And you'll see I'm working um, quite roughly because this can be really really helpful in the uh, beginning because you don't want to get um, sort of uh, too concerned with 
uh, getting everything right. You want to enjoy the process. So again, I'm just applying paint and then you'll see I'm using water just to move that paint around. Okay, so just building this up. And the good thing is even if it's dried, you can reactivate it um, by adding a bit of uh, water. So if you wanted to add another layer of paint. So you can see now what I've done is I've gone into the, uh, the paint again, but I'm not using a lot of water. So I've got a much darker uh, tone of color coming out now for the background. We can see this tone here is much, much darker than this tone here. So to emphasize that, I'm just loading my brush with a lot more paint. Again, we've got some windows in the background up here, so I'm just going to put in the suggestion of those. We can see they're quite dark as well, so you need more paint uh, than water on your brush. I'm just going to do the basic uh, what I call suggestion. So what I mean by that is you don't want to worry about trying to get it exactly the same. This is your version uh, of the image, so it's going to be a little bit different. And now I'm just going to use water just to create some different tones. As I said, the more water you use, the paler uh, that tone will become. So just sort of use this as a place to experiment. And then once you've got all the basic detail in, what you can do is you can start uh, moving things around a little bit more. And then uh, you can start defining some of the areas as well. So we want this area down here to be a little bit more uh, sort of defined in terms of its colour. So I'm just going to add a little bit more paint and then I'm just gliding it across using the water to help me do that. Okay, so that's more or less all of the basic detail in. And I mentioned earlier about a smaller brush. So if you do have a smaller brush to hand, um, wonderful. If you don't, you can equally uh, use pen for this. So what I might actually do is to show you how to uh, utilize other materials. So I've got a, a pen here. Uh, so I'll do a little bit of uh, both just so you can see uh, how you can utilize these things. I'm just going to zoom this in a little bit. I'm going to put some water on here just to soften the bristles a bit. And obviously because this is a much smaller brush, it's going to pick up uh, the paint uh, much more quickly. All right, so I'm just going to start redefining some of these areas. So I'm going to just do a little line across there like that. And another one. And then I'm going to just pop this sort of shadow area down the bottom that we can see. And then we've got an area just there, which will be the bottom of it as well. Again, I'm going to go into my water. So I've taken quite a lot of the paint off there. And I'm just going to start to move this. So as I said, you're using the water to move the paint. You're using the water to uh, create uh, lighter tones of one colour. And obviously, as I said, if you've got more uh, paint on your brush than water, then you'll get a much deeper uh, tone of that colour. So again, I'm going to use the... Uh, the paint now a lot more thickly as you can see so I'm going over this now just to make it a little bit more defined so often you'll see um, 
artists, whether they're painting or drawing, what they do is they get sort of the basic shapes and tones in and then they go over it again, um, just redefine it, make things a little bit clearer maybe, um, building up the tones of colour, building up uh, light and shade. And that's all you do. So you want to think about this as layers, right? So we're layering at the moment. And just do it nice and slowly. Build it up. And again, I'm still darting my gaze backwards and forwards on whatever area that I'm working on. I'm just building this up. Having a look. Just to sort of see if I've put everything in more or less the right place. And sometimes if you just do... Um, little indications here and there that can become quite um, quite subtle but it's still sort of there that can become sort of quite uh, impressionistic so you've got that impression of something so it might not be completely um, obvious but you will uh, know that it is it is there all right, so again, I'm just building up the tones now, making this a little bit more defined. Building it up, building it up. We can see this bit's a little bit darker. So again, just moistening my brush because you don't want it to be dry. And then you can go in with the colors. You can see how much darker that is now. So I'm just gonna utilize that. So you can see this is all one color that we've been using. But by utilising the water, we've been able to create various different uh, tones, shades and highlights. Also, just to give you a little um, tip is if you wanted to create um, a highlight of any particular colour, then you can add white to it. You get a highlight if you wanted to add um, sort of some, something to have a shaded version of that same colour. You can add a little spot of black to it and you'll get shade. If you want a tone of it and uh, perhaps you're, you're working in um, watercolour with several colours, so you're not doing a, a restricted palette with one colour like we are. So if you wanted a tone, another way of creating a tone without using water is to add a little bit of grey to whatever colour you're using. So as I said, for example, if you were using um, blue, and you wanted a highlight version of blue, you add a bit of white to it. If you want a tone of blue, you can add a bit of grey to it. And if you wanted a shaded blue, you can add a spot of black to it. All right, so that's sort of the uh, basis of a lot of um, colour mixing, colour creating, is um, how you create tones, highlights and shades. Okay. Obviously, when you're working in uh, watercolour as we are, you can create the tones uh, quite simply just by uh, utilising water to, to help you achieve that. So if you've got a larger area that you want to cover, like I have here, what I've done is I've just moved to my larger brush again, just because I can move this across much uh, more effectively, much quicker. So as I said, if you want to sort of create something that's a little bit more detailed, then you can uh, use a smaller brush to help you get those details. And then if you're doing something else, you can uh, just utilize the use of a larger brush. Okay. So what I wanna do now, rinse that out, move back to my little brush is just go to this because we can see there's a little bit of a outline here so what I'm going to do is just do a line here now this is a little bit too uh, dark so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the water there and then I'm just going to fade that out like that so just fading that out like that keep fading it out using the water and then we're going to do exactly the same uh, the opposite side okay so just going to Keep doing that. So 
Add a bit more detail in there. Okay, so you can see we've got the, uh, the basis of this really uh, starting to form. Okay, so as we've uh, sort of done so far, we've been using water to create uh, faded uh, various different tones. Using a larger brush just to uh, do some of the uh, larger areas to cover the areas more quickly. A smaller brush for uh, definition. And as I said, using the water, um, more water for uh, sort of paler tones, less water and more paint for uh, deeper, darker tones, as you can uh, see when we have a look at this, this is sort of the darkest areas here, so that's where we've used more paint. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how you can integrate something uh, like this. So this is uh, a marker which is sort of double-ended. So if you did want, want to do extra little details, um, obviously the only thing you need to make sure is that your surface is dry. So if I do this, we can see that these areas here are still a little bit wet, so I'm going to just do a little bit of detail, um, very, very small amount of detail, just on the jug here, because this is completely dry. So the reason you need to wait for it to dry is obviously if you go to put pen on a wet surface, that will disturb the ink, and then you'll probably find that that pen won't work again. Uh, so it's always good to sort of wait for these things. All right, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a more obvious outline here just to help us to really see the uh, the shape of this jug so it makes it a lot more obvious brings it into the foreground so it's in front of us so we can see that everything behind it is in the background okay so i'm not going to do a lot that's pretty much all i'm going to do because i think that's all we need so it just uh, brings everything forward a little bit, <clears throat> makes things a little bit more precise and also particularly um, helpful to do that if you happen to not have a very, very small, uh, fine paintbrush. Okay, the other thing that's always worth doing is just sort of looking backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and seeing if there's anything else that you need to add. So I want a little bit more texture down here, so I'm just going to go in with my brush with a stippling motion. All right, so you're just sort of dotting uh, the paint backwards and forwards. Of course, I've got more paint than water on my brush at the moment. So, because I want to be able to see this uh, sort of texture uh, that we're creating. So I'm just stippling the brush, stippling it around like so. Okay might do a couple of other details and then uh, I'd say that this would be a more or less uh, finished piece so again just just keep building things up keep darting your gaze backwards and forwards because this will help you to see if there's any areas you've missed any areas you need to add uh, or anything else and just helps you to keep track of everything that you've done so far uh, in the painting anything you need to change anything you need to um, adjust or move. As I said, if you find that uh, you feel that you, you, you've made a mistake or you want to add something, you can uh, activate the paint again by adding water to it. And there you go. So I hope that you've uh, found this uh, helpful and uh, I will see you again soon for another art tutorial.